¿Cómo están, estimados alumnos? Vamos admitiéndolos todos. Gracias por, una vez más, la confianza de mantenerse cercano a nosotros. Nosotros gustosos de compartir nuestros conocimientos con ustedes. Vamos a ir conversando un poquito mientras que seguimos admitiendo participantes. Bueno, les vamos a comunicar algo que es importante, sumamente importante. Lo primero que tengo que comunicarles es que las sesiones, a partir de hoy día, vamos a poner más énfasis en el inglés. O sea que van a tener que ir desarrollando este, la habilidad para comprender. Entonces, ya hemos hecho algunos temas y vamos a dar una revisión rápida sobre ellos, pero lo vamos a hacer en inglés. Entonces, vamos a empezar, no quiero aburrirlos más, vamos a empezar con nuestra sesión de hoy. So, we are going to review the sounds of English, all the English sounds. The explanation is about the sounds of English, okay? So, this is the chart, it's called the vowel chart. The vowel chart represents the sounds of English. I told you that my, um, my focus, the way I teach English, is based on pronunciation, okay? So, vowels are an important part of English because if we use the wrong vowels, the pronunciation is more difficult. Uh, listeners are going to be, uh, are going to have more difficulties to understand what we're uh, talking about. So... Okay, so what sounds do we have here? We have the first is the E, this is E, this is E, this is a more open one, E, this is E, this is A, like in Spanish, A, and this is the schwa, the most important vowel in English, the, the schwa, this is E. This is the most important sound in English. I, I talked about it before. This is the sound of er, er, okay? This is u, like in Spanish, u, and this is o, like in Spanish, o. But this sound is between u and o. This is u, u. Words with this, for example, we have book. Look are good. So we don't say... We don't use this vowel to, to talk about a book. We don't say book. We say b, 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 a book. Okay? So this is the sound of all. This sound uh, exists in English, but it doesn't exist alone. So it is present in English, but in words like, for example, boy mm -hmm, or toy, for example. But this sound doesn't exist alone. This, it exists as a diphthong. It doesn't exist as a monophthong, okay? The next sound is this. This sound is present in words like, for example, bought, taught, caught, okay? So this is a very important sound. We're going to see that later. This sound is a, uh, a, uh, similar to this, the schwa, similar, but the difference is that this is a, uh, a different, it's a, a more backward sound. It is pronounced with the, with the movement of the tongue uh, toward the back, okay? So you have ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, and then we have this is ah, uh, ah, uh, it's more open. For example, we have the word hospital. When we say hospital, we use this word, okay? And then we have here, this sound is very common in English. We have the word father, for example, father is, uh, is pronounced with this sound, father, and we have arm, farm, car, is pronounced with this word, with this vowel sound. This is a vowel, a, uh, but this is different. They are different. This is a, uh, this is a, uh, a, uh, and a. Uh. So we ha what is the difference? The tongue moves backwards. When we pronounce this one, the tongue moves backwards. This, when we pronounce this, this is uh, the sound that exists in Spanish, so we don't have any problem when we pronounce this sound in Spanish. So this is a. Uh, Okay, ah, uh, but in English, we use this ah, uh, ah, uh, as a single vowel. This sound exists in English, yes, but it exists in a combination. For example, when I say house, house, mm -hmm. when I say, for example, um, mouse, for example, okay? So these are the sounds of English. These are the sounds of English. So the vowel sounds of English, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, let's see. Let's erase. We have a little problem. I don't know why. 
Uh, I don't know why we have this little problem. So let's erase this. Once in a while it appears, but okay, yeah, it's over. Okay. Okay, very well. Let's keep going. Okay, let's see right here. Oh my God. Bye bye. Very well. Now let's keep going. I don't know. There is a problem there. So we saw we saw the vowels of English and now we have this. Uh, I don't want you to repeat all of this again, but what what are the sounds the most important sounds? Let's do just the first the first row of every sound. So, so this is E, for example, is present in words like eat, eat, and this is not E, this is E, and so this sound is not eat, this is it, eat, it. So this is E. This is the sound of E, but this sound is usually present, is present, but in combination with other vowels. For example, we have eight, A, A, so it's this, A, it's a diphthong, eight. This is the sound of A, like red, for example, A, red, mad, head. We have the sound of A, that is present in words like cat, for example, rat or mat. Okay, so we have the sound a uh, is the Spanish uh, vowel a, uh, but in English this sound is a mix. is in the form of a diphthong, or sometimes it is part of a triphthong. So in this case, we have the word uh, like I I like fight nice. Pi, all these words have this combination, the combination I. Okay, here we have the schwa sound. The schwa sound is the most important sound in English, and so it is present in words like, for example, lesson. The word lesson, for example, has the schwa here on the second syllable. Lesson. How does this sound work? So, when we pronounce the schwa, when we pronounce the schwa, uh, the sound that we have to produce is a very, it's a very weak sound. It's a very weak sound. So like, uh, uh, lesson, okay, lesson. Uh, I have a little problem with this. I don't know why. Okay, lesson, lemon, curious, circus, apron, genius, serious, delicious. Uh, um, Grecia, come here. Grecia. Come here, please. So I, I tell you, my, my daughter can speak in, uh, in English. She can speak, he under, she understands English very well. Can you help me? When I write here, uh, so yeah, this is, you know, the, the tool to write, but when I cancel this and I am uh, moving my mouse, okay? So what happens, there are certain lines that show up without, uh, without any control. So I want to cancel that feature, please. Okay, thank you very much. You're, you're, you're a great girl. Okay, so now we, are, we got rid of that. Okay, so we were talking about the schwa. The schwa. We were talking about the schwa. The schwa is present in almost all uh, words in English. Almost all. Let's do it again. Lesson, lemon, curious, circus, apron, genius, Serious, delicious. So it doesn't matter if the word is spelled with O, or the word is spelled with uh, O U, or the word is spelled with U. Okay. So the sound of this vowel sh uh, schwa is present. It doesn't matter the spelling. 
The word can be spelled with different vowels, but the sound is always uh. Let's do it again. Lesson, lemon, curious, circus, apron, genius, serious, delicious. The next sound that we have here is, is the er sound. Er sound. It is pressing in words like, for example, bird, girl, sir, third, turkey, curtain, word, and work. Okay, so these are uh, just half of the sounds that we are supposed to learn in English. So half of the vowel sounds, I mean. Okay, let's see. W let's see the other half of the sounds. Here we have the other half of the sounds. So how many, how many vowels are there in English? How many sounds, vowel sounds are there in English? We have uh, 15, okay? So here we have ooh. This ooh is similar to Spanish. So example, we have pool, food, or full. Here, this sound is similar to this, but this is not exactly ooh. This is uh, uh. Example, we have pull, foot, or fold. So let's compare. Pull, pull. Pull, pull. Food, foot. Food, foot. Fool, fall. Fool, fall. So this sound all is present in Spanish. But in English, this sound is usually associated. In this case, this sound is associated with uh. So how? This is the way it works. Oh, oh. So we have the word code, code. Road, road, boat, both, no, goat, and ghost. Okay, so this sound is never long in English. It is part of a diphthong. Okay, the next sound is this. Ah, uh, is similar to a schwa, but it is not exactly like it, but it's similar. So listen and repeat. Up, cut, some, oven, other, mother, son, London. Very well. Okay, very well. Now, the next sound is the sound ah, ah. So this is not really all. Oh. This all oh is this. This is all. Oh. In English, it is associated with another sound, like oh, for example, oh. Oh, it is associated with other sound, like boy, for example, toy, no? For example. Okay, but here, this sound is not all. Oh. This is ah, oh, ah, oh. very close to ah. Oh. But it's not a, uh, okay? So, examples. Listen and repeat. Taught. Bought. Fought. Dog. Paul. Daughter. Call. Doll. Okay, very well. So, this sound. This sound is easy to pronounce. It's easy to pronounce it, but we need to pro move the tongue backwards. We need to move the tongue. Backwards. This is not like "a" ah in Spanish. This is a different "a." Ah. It's an "a" ah that we have to move the tongue backwards. So it's different to say "car," "car," and to say "car," 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 Spanish, "car," English. So what is going on here? The tongue moves backwards. So, okay, listen and repeat. Car, bar, art, far, arm, card, cart, father. The last sound of, the, of this list is the word um, the sound similar to this one, similar to this one, this one and this one are very similar, but this is more open. So this is ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, this is ah, uh, ah, uh, more open, okay? So listen and repeat. Hot, rock, top, bob, nod, pot, 
not lock okay so so these are the sounds of the vowel these are the vowel sounds of english so notice they are a lot how many vowel sounds do we have in, in spanish we have just five vowels but in english we have we have 15 vowel sounds okay si tienen alguna duda por favor comuníquese a través del chat yo les estaré leyendo para responderles okay so let's keep going so this is a funny story okay two women okay ¿Por qué no estamos activando eh, el audio para ustedes el día de hoy? Porque queremos que este, todos tengan la oportunidad de escuchar y ha habido algunas observaciones en cuanto que no se escucha perfectamente. De esta manera, este, todos van a poder escuchar el audio con claridad, especialmente cuando también lo subamos a nuestro canal y puedan ustedes revisarlo otra vez. Ok, so this is a funny story. Funny story. So... Okay, they are thinking, they are thinking, this is, um, this is what she's thinking. She's thinking about this. She has a problem at home. She has a problem in her kitchen. What's going on? Okay, so she has a leaking. She has a leaking. But what is this? This is leaking? No, this is not leaking. This is lick, licking, licking. So the dog is licking the girl's face. But this is no, this is a problem. This is a leaking problem. So the story goes like this. She said, you said leak? No, I said leak, leak. I am sorry. So when we change the vowel sounds, we can make big mistakes. So that that's why it's very important to know how to pronounce the vowels of English. Here we have the consonants. Okay, we have the consonants here. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we have like 24, 24 consonants in English. 24 consonants in English. And we're going to see this in more detail right here. Okay. So this is a better, um, a better chart to explain you what is the difference between uh, the consonants. Consonants are different from vowels. So when we use, when we, uh, use the consonants, our mouth uh, is not completely open because the tongue, in one way or another, sometimes the lips, are blocking the mouth. So there is a little blocking of the mouth uh, produced by the tongue or by the lips. Okay, so let's see. Uh, consonants are classified, okay? So we have the fricatives. The fricatives have the, are the consonants that are produced with er, a lot of er, okay? So, and there is certain friction too. When we pronounce the fricatives, there is some friction. So example, we have the F, F. Example, fan. But, okay, let's see. The, um, the equivalent the equivalent of F, but this is a different kind of sound because this is voice, voiceless and voice. The fricative sounds are divided in two groups, voiceless and voice. The voiceless are the ones that are produced without participation of the uh, vocal cords, but the V sound, the V, v is a voice sound. So it means when we pronounce this sound, there is a vibration, the vibration of the vocal cords. So we have this fan, but this is van. Okay, very similar. The difference is, the difference is, uh, okay, let me see. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, well, I activated the chat. Uh, Pueden hacerme preguntas a través del chat. ¿Alguna pregunta? Dice Nino Espinosa Quispe. What's the difference? Uh, oh, what's the difference between uh, two words? Can we pronounce the word cut or the other is cat? Cut and cat. No? Cut and cat. What's the channel called? The channel is called. Um, um, speak English like a native. Okay, uh, 
Diego is going to send you the uh, Diego is going to send you the name of the channel, the link for the channel right now. Okay. Diego is going to send you the link for the channel right now. For the ones who are not aware about the li the link of the channel, visit the channel. You have all the materials that we are uh, producing. We uploaded. We are uploading all the materials there for your own enjoyment and for your. Um, you can go on your own pace to learn uh, during your free time. Okay, so so we have two words. We have cut and we have cat okay very good that's uh that's the the answer okay let's keep going okay so we have f and we have so we have fan and here we have van what is the difference the difference is the 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 vocal cords are vibrating because all these are voice and these are voiceless here the next uh, sound is okay this sound is produced with the tongue between the lip the teeth the tongue between the lips the the tongue has to be between the teeth okay the tongue has to be between the teeth and we pronounce this this way so this word is pronounced think this is the same position the tongue between the the teeth but here we have to vibrate the vocal cords so this is th th this and this is think th this th think here this is easy it exists in spanish so we have s we have z z z okay so this is sink and this is zu sink zoo okay next cell this symbol represents the sound sh, sh. example we have she and we have this sound this is sh, but this is zh, zh, zh. okay this sound is a kind of weird but uh, not many words have this sound but this is one of them okay so we have the word vision listen and repeat vision 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 okay the challenge here is to pronounce uh, correctly the v and the j okay vision okay here the vowel sound is a schwa vision 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 okay next sound we have this it's a very soft sound, okay? It's not strong. It's a soft sound. So how do we pronounce this? We pronounce it hope, 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 okay? I hope you are on time. I hope you arrive on time at work. I hope you arrive on time at work today, for example, okay? Next, we have the affricates. Affricate sounds are pronounced with two, two sounds at the same time so here we have the t, the t and sh, the she sound this one okay if we pronounce it together we pronounce this sound ch. this sound exists in spanish in this case this is a very simple word uh, listen and repeat chip chip next sound is g g so this is ch, and this is g this is similar to this but this is a little softer okay so let's see chip and this is chip 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 okay next we have the plosive sounds voiceless and voice the p and the b the p and the b okay so let's see let's pronounce this word put and this is but put but okay next word we have the word t, the word talk we pronounce talk with the consonant t, t, and this is d, d, t, d. this is voiceless all of them are voiceless and all of them are voice talk dad 
g, g, k, g. So come is pronounced with k, k, come. G, g, gang. G, g, gang. Okay. Next, we have the nasal, the liquid, and the glide. Nasals are uh, not, is, they are not uh, difficult to pronounce. We have the sound M, like man. We have N, like in none, none. And we have this sound. This symbol represents, uh, is represented in words that finish in NG. For example, in the word hung, hung. So the sound is G, G. It's a nasal sound, okay? Liquid, we have the L and the R. <coughs> For example, we have the word law, law, and this is er, er. The R in English is different from the R in Spanish. The Spanish R is r, r, and this is er, er, r. Spanish, er, English. In this case, this word is pronounced run, run. Finally, we have the glides, and so the first is, ooh, we start from ooh, walk, okay, walk. And here we start from e, e, yes, yes, walk, yes. Very well. Let's keep going. So we saw on the first, on the previous session, we saw the rhythm in English. This is English rhythm. Let's try the English rhythm. So I will read it. Try to follow me, please. Okay, I will put, uh, I will make a pause between uh, each one. Okay, so listen and repeat. The book is good. The book on the desk is good. The book on the black desk is good. The little book on the black desk is good. The little book on the black desk is a good novel. The little book on the black desk is a fairly good novel. The topic in the little book on the black desk is a fairly good adventure novel. Okay? Next exercise. She's in bed. She's in bed. She's in bed at the hospital. She's in bed at the town hospital. She's in bed at the town hospital in Hartford. She's in bed at the town hospital in Hartford, Connecticut. She's in bed at the town hospital in Hartford, Connecticut months ago. She's in bed at the town hospital in Hartford, Connecticut four months ago. Let's do the next exercise. A bird near the window. A bird near the window. A bird stayed near the window. A bird stayed near the window yesterday. A blue bird stayed near the window yesterday. A small blue bird stayed near the window yesterday morning. A small blue bird stayed near the Johnson's window yesterday morning. A small blue bird stay near the Johnson family window yesterday morning. Okay, so this is the rhythm. English rhythm works this way. All my book has been developed based on this structure, on this rhythmic pattern. We need to learn to imitate this rhythmic pattern. It's the rhythm of English. Vowel sounds. In this lesson, lesson number one, let's review it again. So we're going to see the vowel, the, the first is the schwa, the most important sound in English, the schwa. Then this, this is uh, 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 and this is like uh, 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 and this is e, e, and this is a, uh, a. Uh. We're going to see these sounds, uh, uh, yes, in a few minutes. We're going to see the demonstrative, this and that. We, uh, we have words with the PowerPoint um, presentations about this and that. So you're already familiar with this. And this is the verb to be, uh, is, and are. No, indefinite articles are on and the adverse of frequency. This is, this is the content that we are going to see today. 
And let's see, what is that? This man is asking, what is that? The answer is, it's a butterfly. It's a butterfly. So listen and repeat. What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? Or what's that? The answer is, it's a butterfly. It's a butterfly. The schwa, the most important sound in English, the schwa, the schwa sound is probably the most important sound in English language. Okay, so uh, why? Because if you don't pronounce the schwa, if you don't uh, use the schwa properly, your English is going to sound like a foreign, like a foreign. It means your pronunciation is not going to be uh, similar to a native speaker of English. So in order to do that, we need to learn, we need to master the schwa sound. Okay, ya estamos por acabar estos primeros 40 uh, minutos. Eh, no se olviden hacer clic en el mismo link para volver a ingresar, ¿ok? Se, se va a cortar en cualquier momento. En cuanto se corte, hacen un clic y volvemos a este, estar conectados. Nos queda exactamente una hora, un minuto Exactamente un minuto, ¿ok? Y vamos a ir en retroceso. Bueno, uh, so I am talking about the schwa, the, the most important sound in English. The schwa sound is present, especially in these kind of words, monosyllabic words, like er, the, of, t, but, um, for, um. So these words are usually simplified when we, uh, use them in a context, in connected speech, when we say sentences. So let's see these sounds. So we have here the sound, uh, 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 and we have e, 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 it's not e, it's not e, it's e, 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 and we have a, a, a. Okay, examples, uh, uh. So we have, listen and repeat. Son, mother, grandmother, sunny, funny. The next sound is the sound e. Okay, very common sound in English too. So the sound here is e, but let's pronounce some words. We have it, we have is, it's not s, it's with a z sound is. This, Mrs. and Millie, Mrs. and Millie, okay? Again, it is this, Mrs. and Millie, okay? The next one is a, eh. so we have the words Pat, Sam, that, family, and fancy, okay? Um, we saw this, we saw this, this is the Johnson family. Listen and repeat, okay, please. This is the Johnson family. Mr. Michael Johnson is the father. Mrs. Mary Johnson is the mother. Emily Johnson is the daughter. Sam Johnson is the son. Mrs. Sarah Johnson is the grandmother. And Mr. Pat Johnson is the grandfather. Sonny is the dog. Kitty is the cat. Francie is the bird. Okay, so let's see, question for you. Who is the father in the Johnson family? What is the answer? Okay. Okay, the answer is Michael Johnson is the father in the Johnson family. Who is the mother in the Johnson family? The answer is Mary Johnson is the mother in the Johnson family. Who is the who is the son in the Johnson family? Sam is the son in the Johnson family. Who is the daughter in the Johnson family? Emily is the daughter in the Johnson family. 
who is the grandfather in the Johnson family. Pat Johnson is the grandfather, who is the grandmother in the Johnson family. Sarah Johnson is the grandmother in the Johnson family. Okay, so let's see. Tricky questions, tricky questions, negative questions. Is Pat Johnson the son? Is Pat Johnson the son? No, he isn't. He's the grandfather. Is Michael Johnson the grandfather? No, he isn't. Pat Johnson is the grandfather. Michael Johnson is the father. Is Mary Johnson the daughter? No, she isn't. She is the mother. Is Sarah Johnson the mother? No, she isn't. She is the grandmother. Who is Emily Johnson? She is the daughter. Who is Sam Johnson? He is the son. Who is Michael Johnson? He is the father. Who is Mary Johnson? She is the mother. Who is Pat Johnson? He is the grandfather. Who is Sarah Johnson? She is the grandmother. So let's see. Now we have this and we have that. In this case, the object is closed. The question is, uh, repeat after me. This is a vase. This is a vase. What is this? The answer is, it's a vase. Is this a chair? Is this a chair? Is this a chair? No. Sh no, it isn't. It's a vase. This is a lamp. This is a lamp. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is this? What is this? The answer is, it's a lamp. Is this a vase? Is this a vase? No, it isn't. It's a lamp. This is a piano. This is a piano. What is this? It's a piano. It's a piano. Is this a lamp? No, it isn't. It's a piano. This is a rocking chair. This is a rocking chair. What is this? It's a rocking chair. Is this a piano? No, it isn't. It's a rocking chair. It's a rocking chair. This is a window. This is a window. This is a window. What is this? It's a window. Is this a rocking chair? No, it isn't. It's a window. This is a sofa. This is a sofa. What is this? It's a sofa. Is this a window? Is this a window? No, it isn't. It's a sofa. This is a door. This is a door. What is this? It's a door. Is this a sofa? No, it isn't. It's a door. This is a cage. This is a cage. What is this? It's a cage. It's a cage. Is this a door? No, it isn't. It's a cage. This is a stereo. This, uh, this is a stereo. What is this? It's a stereo. Is this a cage? No, it isn't. It's a stereo. This is a curtain. This is a curtain. What is this? It's a curtain. Is this a stereo? No, it isn't. It's a curtain.
This is a music CD. This is a music CD. What is this? It's a music CD. Is this a curtain? Is this a curtain? No, it isn't. It's a music CD. This is an armchair. This is an armchair. Mm -hmm. What is this? It's an armchair. Okay, is this a music CD? Is this a music CD? No, it isn't. It's an armchair. Now, we're going to see the plural. The, no, I mean, we are going to see the other word. I'm sorry. This is the word that. So when the object is far, this is far. The other object is close, close. But now the object is far. So we don't say this. We say that. Okay, for objects that are far, we use the word that. That is a cradle. What is that? The answer is, it's a cradle. Is that an armchair? No, it isn't. It's a cradle. What is that? What is that? It's a telephone. It's a telephone. Is that a cradle? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's a telephone. That is a ball. That is a ball. What is that? The answer is, it's a ball. Is that a telephone? Is that a telephone? No, it isn't. It's a ball. That is a doll. That is a doll. Okay, what is that? It's a doll. It's a doll. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh. La grabación, este, les cuento, la grabación, me preguntan acá si puedo enviar la grabación. La grabación está disponible en el canal. Suban al canal y todos ahí pueden este, disfrutar del contenido de la sesión. ¿ya? Eh, es, sí, cualquier información, por favor, contáctese con, a través del, del WhatsApp con Diego. Diego los va a orientar, ¿sí? Ok, let's continue. So... Uh, that is a house. That is a house. What is that? The answer is, it's a house. Is that a doll? No, it isn't. It's a house. That is a boat. That is a boat. Okay? Uh, that is a boat. What is that? It's a boat. Is that a house? Is that a house? No, it isn't. It's a boat. That is a wall. That is a wall. What is that? It's a wall. Is that a boat? No, it isn't. It's a wall. That is a ceiling. That is a ceiling. What is that? It's a ceiling. Is that a wall? No, it isn't. It's a ceiling. That is a rug. That is a rug. What is that? It's a rug. Is that a ceiling? No, it isn't. It's a rug. That is a chair. That is a chair. What is that? It's a chair. Is that a rug? No, it isn't. <clears throat> it's a chair. That is a floor. That is a floor. What is that? It's a floor. Is that a chair? No, it isn't. It's a floor. That is a flower pot. That is a flower pot. What is that? It's a flower pot. Is that a floor? No, it isn't. 
it's a flower pot that is a desk that is a desk what is that it's a desk is that the flower pot no it isn't it's a desk okay very well so let's see now we have some grammar okay so some of you need grammar to support uh, to reinforce your knowledge about english uh, it's important to know a little bit of a grammar it says the verb to be expresses location okay when it is next to another of a place or a specific location it is so the verb to be expresses location we can uh, use the verb to be with to talk about a state, a state or about a quality. Location, a state, or quality. Example, location. Sarah is at the office now. So with the verb to be, we use or we mention a location or a place. She is at the office. She is at home. She is at the hospital. She is at the bank. Okay? So with the verb to be, we use the verb to be in relation to a location or a place. The verb to be can be associated with a state too. For example, Sarah is excited about her new job. So it means she is happy about her new job. She's very happy about her new job. She is happy, she is excited. <clears throat> okay. So with the verb to be, we use the we use adjective with the verb to be excited, happy, sad, okay um stimulating so the movie is stimulating her job is interesting her job is boring so we um, define the state the state of a person the, the state of a person's uh, let's see let's say the person's um, emotional state we describe the person's emotional state with a verb to she's excited she's happy she's sad okay whatever okay what else can we do with the verb to be we give a definition a definition for example sarah is a secretary sarah is a secretary that is a pen this is a pen so we define we can define with the verb to be we can give definitions okay next let's see the structure let's see the structure okay listen and repeat i am mm -hmm. you are he is she is it is we are you are they are negative i am not you are not he is not she is not it is not we are not you are not they are not okay this is the negative form and then we have the interrogative form am i for example am i your teacher so yes you are okay negative no you aren't are you my students are you my students yes we are all negative no we aren't is he a student yes he is or no he isn't is she a student yes she is no she isn't is it a pencil yes it is or no it isn't are we students okay yes we are no we aren't are you teachers yes we are <coughs> or no we aren't are they students yes they are or no they aren't okay so let's see how do we use the verb to be we can use it according to the function Remember that I said that we use the verb to be uh, in relation to a location or a state or a definition when we def define what something is. Location, for example, examples, more examples. Peter is at home. What is this? It's a, it's a location. It's the location, the place where Peter is. Peter is at home. Peter is happy. 
So this is about the emotional state. She is ha he is happy. Peter is happy. We use happy in relation to the verb to be. The definition. We give a definition. Peter is a student. We define what Peter is. Peter is a student. He is not a professional. He is a student. Okay. The negative form would be Peter is not at home. Peter is not happy. Peter is not a student. The interrogative form is Peter at home. Is Peter happy? Is Peter a student? So notice that the verb to be becomes the first element in the question form. This is very important to remember. Contractions. Let's see the contractions. I am, the contraction is I am. You are, the contraction is your. He is, the contraction is his. She, she is, the contraction is She's. It is. It's. We are. We're. You are. You're. They are. They're. Okay? So, grammar is important. It's a little bit boring, but it is necessary to know how English works. Contractions, the negative form. This is important. So, let's see how the contractions work. I am not. The contraction is. I am, the contraction, the I and the verb to be am is contracted when we have am. So it's I am, but this is I am. I am not. Okay, so let's see. Uh, a second contraction, we don't have a second contraction. This is the only contraction of the first person. You are not, contraction, you're not, or other contraction, you aren't. He is not. He's, he's not, contraction, he's not, or he isn't. She is not, she's not, she isn't. It is not, it's not, it isn't. We are not, we're not, we aren't. You are not, you're not, you aren't. They are not, they're not. They aren't. Notice that we don't say there. The pronunciation here is not there, but there. They're not. There. They're not. Just no questions. Okay, so here uh, we have uh, yes, no questions. Yes, no questions are very important in English. This kind of questions get yes or no answers. Okay? Uh, notice that yes, no questions exist in all type of tenses in English. So let's see a little bit how it works. For example, are you American? The answer is yes, I am American. Or it could be no, I am not American. Is she at home? No, she isn't at home. Or it could be yes, she is at home. Am I a good teach? Am I a uh, am I a good dancer? Yes, you're. A very good dancer or no you are not a very good dancer are both of you siblings no we are not siblings but cousins or yes we are siblings is your father upstairs no he is in upstairs but downstairs or affirmative yes he is upstairs okay so yes no questions get yes or no answers this is important to know so when we give answers, the answer can be short or it could be long. They could be long. For example, are you Mr. Morris? Yes, I am, is the short answer. The long answer is, yes, I am Mr. Morris. Okay, so that's the complete, the long answer. Am I a teacher? No, you are not. No, you are not a teacher. Is David your friend? Short answer, no, he isn't. Long answer, no, he isn't my friend. No, he isn't my friend. Now, this is a second kind of question that we have. We have who questions too. And of course, we have this, this kind of uh, words that are called question words, who, what, where, when, why, whose, 
whom and how. Who is about a uh, people? Who is about people? What is for objects? Okay, objects or ideas. Where is about location? Location. When is about time? Time. When? When do you? When are you at home? I am at home every day. It's about time every day. Are you at home on Mondays? Yes, I am. I am at home on Mondays. Monday is a day of the week. Why? Why are you at home on Mondays? Because it's my free day. My free day is a day in which a person doesn't work. Whose? Whose? In Spanish, mean the quién. Whose car is that? Oh, it's my father's car. Whom? Whom? Quién? Whom or who are equivalents? And how? Como? Okay? So these are the questions that are called question words. I mean, these are the question words. And example, we have, who are you? What is that? Where is Susan? When are you at home? Why is she happy? Whose car is that? With whom is he? Oh, she is with you. How tall is the building? Okay. A specific information. When we want a specific information, we usually use question words. For example, I am an English student. Who are you? I am an English student. What is that? It's a chair. Where is Susan? She's at home. When are you at home? I am at home at six. Why is she happy? She's happy because it's Friday. Whose car is that? It's Peter's car. With whom is he? He is with Jessica. How tall is the building? It's very tall. Okay? So, W questions help us to know specific information. But yes, no questions are used to get just yes or no answer. So that's the difference between uh, yes, no questions, yes, no questions, and WH questions. Articles. We have the articles here. So we have two kinds of articles. We have a and we have an. Okay? We have a and we have an. So when do we use a? We use a when the word that comes next is it starts with a consonant sound. So, p, p, it's a consonant sound. So, the article is a, a pen, a desk, a watermelon, a doctor. So, when the word that we use uh, it starts with a vowel sound, for example, eraser, envelope, orange, or engineer. So, these words start with a vowel sound. Okay, so we need to use an. We don't use a. We use an. We use an. Because an is used when the word starts with a vowel sound. Example, listen and repeat. An eraser, an envelope, an orange, an engineer. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, then we have adverse of frequency. Very important. Adverse of frequency are very important. Adverse of frequency, like for example, always or never, usually go after the verb to be. Check the next examples. For example, she is always on time at work. She is always on time at work. They are never at the park in January. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Sam is usually at home. Pat Johnson is often very sleepy. Michael Johnson is rarely late at work. He's sometimes a little crazy at work. So we have always, never, usually, often, rarely, and sometimes. Okay, very well. Always means siempre. Never means 
nunca. Okay, usually, usualmente, often means frequentemente, rarely means raramente, sometimes means algunas veces. So, these are the adverbs of frequency, and when we use the verb to be, is, are, okay, the adverb of frequency goes after the verb to be. Okay, the verb to be, after the verb to be, comes an adverb of frequency. Adverb of, fre adverb of frequency, other of frequency, other of frequency, and other of frequency, and an other of frequency. Okay. Uh, hasta aquí vamos a dejar la lección, amigos. Espero que eh, hayan podido seguirme. Este, la intención de hablarles en inglés es hacer que su oído se acostumbre. Si tienen algunas sugerencias, háganosla llegar, por favor. Ya nos queda solo unos minutos para terminar. Eh, me, mejor dicho, para que eh, la sesión de Zoom se termine. Y les eh, agradecería que nos hagan llegar a saber... Eh, So, ¿Qué les pareció la clase solo en inglés? Queremos saber cómo, cómo les va, ¿no? Este, ¿Qué dificultades tienen? Y también queremos eh, a, agradecer y, a las personas que están este, colaborando con sus donaciones en, en la cuenta de PayPal que tenemos que, eh, y que Diego les está haciendo llegar. Eh, y también sobre la oferta que le hemos hecho, es una oferta, se las voy a, a mencionar otra vez. Sé que con las clases de, estamos brindando de manera gratuita, no podemos detectar quién aprende y no, no, y quién no. Es por ello que tenemos la promoción de entregarles por solo dos dólares eh, una primera clase de inducción. En esa sesión van a conocer la metodología, los recursos materiales y les vamos a entregar todos los beneficios que recibirán por su clase personalizada. También en esa primera clase sentirán un cambio cualitativo en su pronunciación en inglés con la aplicación de estrategias novedosas. Muchas gracias por su presencia, por su participación y nos estamos viendo en la próxima sesión. Cuídense mucho.